Hello, welcome to What the Flick, a pot smoking, trash talking, potty mouth, poker banging teddy bear could only come from the mind of Seth MacFarlane. So we're talking about Ted. He's Ted, right? Because he's a teddy bear. That yep. makes sense. That's didn't, the adult <laughs> version. Mm -hmm. Didn't get that part until like the first scene. Like when he said, I'm naming him Ted. I'm like, he's a teddy bear. I mean, for oh. all the promos, for all the things, I just thought, <laughs> I just thought Ted was the name of the talking. Bear. It could have been Vladimir, for all we know. Um, I am Christy, and this is Ben. Dim one is Ben. This is, this is Alonso. And this is Gray. Gray is here to talk about Ted with us. Um, please describe the very complicated plot of Ted. Ted is a talking teddy bear. <laughs> he is Mark Wahlberg's teddy bear. Mark Wahlberg makes, makes a wish. God, there's a funny scene in the beginning about the Jewish kids. Man. Don't give it away. Don't give it away. That's it. Didn't give it away. It's funny scene. First of all, all funny scenes, all scenes about Jewish kids are funny. Especially um, in a show up. Right. Um, Just not Schindler's List. Uh, and uh, he's, he plays a lonely kid, and he wants a uh, friend. And he wishes his teddy bear were alive, and his teddy bear becomes alive. And then the fun twist is, is that as, the, as, as Mark Wahlberg grows old, so does the teddy bear. And uh, and he changes along the way. Oh, fuck that. It's, it's been four years, Johnny. You and me have been together for 27 years. Where's my ring? Huh? Where's my ring, asshole? Stop. Where's my ring, motherfucker? Come on. OK, now, I think it is helpful to be a fan of Family Guy, but not necessarily essential. It's, it's a, a lot of ways like a, a live action, feature length version of a Family Guy episode. It's not nearly as annoying. <laughs> I don't think. I, so you're not a fan of Family Guy? I'm a casual right? fan. Okay. I feel like you've seen one, you've seen them all. Mm. And I liked that they used the flashbacks, but not so much. It took me out of the now. I, I actually don't like Family Guy. Like if somebody sends me a 30 second YouTube clip, I'll think, oh, that's funny. And then, But then I, an entire episode I find kind of deadly. I did like this movie, but in the same way, I think there are parts of it that are some of the funniest things I've seen in ages. But then there's these sort of like, okay, can we get get on with it? Let's, hmm. you know, I felt there were sort of sort of laggy bits between the really funny stuff. That's there probably because you're real smart. I'm just saying, because <laughs> you have an attention span. I, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I sort of felt I, I feel similar about Family Guy. Is that when I watch it, when Family Guy, when I watch it, it's funny. The hundredth episode special was one of the funniest things I've ever seen on television, and I was like, well, now I'm going to start watching. And I started watching, and I thought, right, well, okay. But I mean, but, <laughs> it took it took a hundred episodes to give half an hour worth of. The hundred episodes is brilliant, and he's a really funny guy, Seth MacFarlane, and he's smart and. And I don't know, I thought because there were some of the funniest things that we've seen in years, it's just, you know, it depends on when you hit a quotient of like, you know, if you saw three of them and then the other parts right. lagged, you know, but I thought maybe there were six mm. and the other parts lagged, so right. that's why overall, uh, I, I just thought it was excellent. And I thought, well, and I think Mark Wahlberg is so, I mean, that he does, when, when you have to be a straight man yeah. and say these and play these scenes straight, he does it. Brilliant. Right. Yes. Yeah. Really, his, really, really. His comic skills, I think, are often underrated. Yeah, totally. I mean, like, I, you know, I think back to like I Heart Huckabees. Totally. You know, I mean, he's a re he can be really funny in the right movie, you know, and I, this this gives him. I, I to thought do it. the other guys was the funniest movie of whatever. Okay. The hell oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Love that. Yeah. And, and his scene in the other guys with Will Ferrell, and when he gets introduced to the first time to. What's her incredibly hot name? Oh, uh, Eva Mendes. Eva Mendes. I mean, I've seen that scene three or four times. Every time, I think it's like the funniest scene, and it's all because he plays it mm -hmm. dumb and straight right. and brilliantly. And he looks like that kind of guy. And he, I, I'm, I always like his movies, and I'm so ashamed to look at his filmography and just go, loved it, loved yeah, it, right. really Why liked it. Why would you be ashamed? Oh, because come on, Max Payne, really? Okay, that? The, the, there, there are a couple exceptions. <laughs> I mean, I'm not. Which I'm not is his, that his previous collaboration with Mila Kunis, incidentally. Ooh. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I hear you know he was on Howard this week promoting the movie, and of course, eventually they got into a really good conversation, a really intense conversation. And first of all, you realize how smart Mark Wahlberg is, how mm. what a sense he has of this business. And sure. Town Except of what when he's talking about 9/11. Yeah. Right. He's well. I mean, yeah, but that was a throwaway line. Whatever. He says dumb things. The guy's been to prison, but he talks interestingly about that too. But. Uh, he understands the business, and like he knows, he talked about the shooter, and he talked about Planet of the Apes, and he was like, "Yeah, those didn't, those didn't work," and he sort of explained why. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, you look at stuff, and he didn't mention Max Payne, but he certainly could have and should have, <laughs> right? But in between, then, but it, but as you say, you can pick out like six, seven, eight movies. You're like, "Wow, really good, yeah. really the good, really good. And right? Yeah. yeah, right." I, being the not so smart one, as compared to Alonzo, oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm just saying. I sat, and I think this is one of the best R-rated comedies of the last five years. Because yeah. they do I tend I don't to disagree. try too hard, right? They do try to try, try too hard to shock us. But here we have, for example, a poop joke. 
which I am not ordinarily a fan no. of, as you guys know. Christy and I stand firmly against yeah. poop but jokes. This one what worked, makes me get though. This, this, one this one was different. I think on the heels of That's My Boy, it was definitely like, oh, wow, this is what a disgusting R-rated comedy is supposed to yeah. be like. These are actually, this is funny. Yeah, it's not, and, yeah, the, it's, the, it's not gross. And the poop joke, because it wasn't so much about the poop, if we're talking about the same yeah, one, yeah, yeah. it's more about Mark Wahlberg's reaction to it. Both of their reactions. I mm -hmm. thought it was going to have a heart attack. And where the poop so comes from. I swear to God. Where the poop comes from is also crucial. Yes. <laughs> and the, the uh, Giovanni Ribisi dancing, yeah. I was literally clutching the man <laughs> sitting next yeah. to me, burying my face That's in his That's interesting, because I, I didn't, like, once Giovanni Ribisi became a significant player after a, a funny initial introduction to him and the kid who plays his son, when they come back in the movie, as you know, they will. Um, like then I, I was, then I was like for the first time. That was when I was like, it's it's, yeah. it's a little like okay, we have to have these guys to have a third act. And, right. uh, yeah. but, it, it, but there was still enough funny stuff going on that I kind of forgave it after a while. But I, th th what kills me about this, and, and I get, this is so sort of the Seth MacFarlane thing that there's a point in this movie where he references not just. A, a, a famous scene from a famous movie, but a famous scene from a famous movie that That's is in itself a parody, a parody of another right. famous scene of another famous movie. And I was like, oh man, we are down the rabbit hole. <laughs> but, but then they'll do a reference, like there's a very, very specific Family Guy reference. Write that down, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> There's a very, very specific Family Guy reference in here, which I don't think we need, right? It's, oh, yeah, it's yeah, really, totally, really yeah, obvious. Right, 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 right. I, yeah, that, that was great. That was, that was awesome. Yeah, the right. only part of the movie that uh, that bothered me is when it got like too pleased with itself, right. like, oh, I'm Seth MacFarlane, don't forget. But, and but Family Guy's like moment. that, and that's why you throw enough of this stuff at a wall, and a lot of it will stick, but some of it won't, and like the self-congratulatory element of it is a little off-putting. I agree. And I, and I like the fact they do address the notion that if there were indeed a talking teddy bear, that he would be famous. <laughs> I know, but, but now he's a has-been. So glad you mentioned that because that was uh, that was on my notes that are in the car. You took notes. Um, the, uh, the, uh, no, that was was great. Is that so? He has this talking teddy bear when he's a kid, and then naturally, as you would expect to happen, either they hide it, right, right, right. or it becomes oh my god, the talking teddy bear that's on all the news, and then twenty years pass and nobody gives a crap. Yeah. About it. And I thought that was a really, really deft way to handle how we deal with this talking teddy bear in real life. Really, really thoughtfully done. Yeah, I'm super glad we didn't Stewie Griffin him. Be like, nobody knows if you can hear Stewie. Right, right, right. Oh, yeah. right, right. We Calvin know. and Hobbs. Yeah. You know, and the, <laughs> it was the certainty right. that is so rare for him that I thought made the whole thing awesome. Because they didn't have to focus on, can they hear him? Can right. they not? Yeah. Is he Teddy yeah. Rex? Yeah. Right. Sometimes on. specific is better for that kind of thing. For yeah. sure. And the fact that everyone can see hey, him Ted. and hear him, and, the, and he is so seamlessly integrated into all of the action. I mean, even though he's intentionally really ratty and really dirty, and he's, you know, smoking pot and drinking all day he looks like crap <laughs> smoking but, pot drinking all day and banging hookers banging hookers with names <laughs> like Sauvignon Blanc yeah. but, but he is like I was really really impressed with the effects and that's especially yes. true it is we're, seamless when we're talking mm. about the, um, the celebrity element of him there's a scene where he's on Tonight Show with Johnny Carson that was it is brilliant. seamless like, that was how really good that? I thought I said I think we half the people watching might uh, said, said the words to themselves I, I don't know how, how they did they do that how did they do that Forrest Gump is very good. Yeah. has it ever looked that good it looked I couldn't believe it it almost took me out of it. And it makes Wahlberg's performance that much better when you realize he spent this entire film talking to a tennis ball. That fights, yeah. that fights, <laughs> that fight, fight there's a fight good. scene which gets a huge reaction in the audience and you know he's fighting nothing. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> Going it's really good. Going through a shower curtain with, right. I don't know, right. who knows what. We should do numbers, we all like it a lot, it sounds like. Let's do numbers, please. Miss Gray. 9.1, because nice. it has a nice heart. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> 7.2. Uh, 8.6, really liked it. If anything, I was low, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with having uh, Mila Kunis in a movie. Yes, she um, has a bit of a thankless role. She's yeah, just she, girlfriend. Yeah. Well, she, but she, she also has to be the nag who kind of drags him into adulthood, which is kind of a drag. She's it's not a, so naggy. It's a drag, right? but she's not so naggy. Yeah. Like, she does it reluctantly. She knows it's naggy. <laughs> she wishes it. Like, I just thought she, it is a thankless role, and she did a little I, something I, with I it. Felt I, like, I, like, I felt like, like she's, cool chick. She's, yeah. she's the mommy, and all the other women in the movie, and I mean, all the other women in the movie are whores. Yes, that's right. <laughs> She's a modern drag. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, my so the ratio's is, a little off. Yes, my number is 7.4, so our average is 8.1. It is 73% in the tomato world, so we're actually a lot higher on Ted than most of our colleagues. <laughs> yeah, we had fun, though, so yeah, uh, I think it's you fun. too. It's funny movie. All right, kids. I'm going to let you do something. Is that a shit? <laughs> is that a shit? <laughs>